Once again, as in previous years, we say lights, camera, action, good morning, good show. Not only is the new year uh, progressing and gathering and gaining momentum, but the excitement here is uh, snowballing and mushrooming because everybody wants to meet the man we mentioned yesterday, the bread man, George Burnett. He is the most uh, well-bred man in all of television. I'll, I'll, I'll propose a toast. I'll propose a toast to the fact that this is going to be a great guest and... Uh, because there got to be something to it. Because during the Depression, I think the, the big the big expression uh, back in the 1931 period was everybody's on the bread line, the bread line. We're going to find out what bread is all about. We're going to meet today the master salesman, Barry J. Farber. Mr. Farber is the author of Breakthrough Selling, how to sell when people are uh, not spending much money, as in uh, these days when consumers are possibly pinching pennies. I'm going to pinch a little bit of nostalgia right now, a little bit of volume with you wandering through television's memory lane, one of my favorite little uh, homemade uh, segments. I have no idea what pictures are going to come up, except that I just grabbed a handful. Edward uh, Mulhair, I believe. Uh, Jan Sterling and Hugh O'Brien. Hermione Gingold. I'm not young anymore, she sang. Young lady named Barbara Streisand with Jack LaLanne and Rudy Valley a couple of years ago. Marilyn Michaels and Simone Signore. Stuart Whitman. Edward Everett Horton, famous comedian actor. And that's about if not more of these as the days and weeks go on right now. These words then on with what we'll call a big special an extravaganza on selling and bread. Let's watch this first. wanted to meet this man. He does those one-hour discussions on TV. We'll, we'll sort of uh, uh, condense it, but I've been a long-time fan. Of course, I'm a fan of the other Barry Farber, too. I, I knew you'd mention that. Sure. This is Barry mm -hmm. J. Farber. Do you mention the other Barry Farber in your well, actually, book? Actually, I interviewed him. He had a book uh, called Making People Talk, and it was a whole chapter on listening. Right. And the top sales reps in the world do that the best, so I interviewed him. He's in the book, actually. I gave Barry. a uh, lecture at the Learning Annex or somewhere recently called... Uh, uh, so you want to be a talk show host or the lost art of conversation. People, mm -hmm. people like that, right? Sure. Uh, you do things, I mean, the top sales rep we talk about in the book, talk about listening, follow-up, taking care of the customer, honesty, and uh, one of the biggest things they do is ask good questions, good open-ended questions to find out about the needs of their customer, or, uh, the needs of uh, the business that they're selling to, and you're probably the king of questions here. So far. What about, what, remember, remember, uh, uh, Willie Loman, uh, Arthur Miller wrote a yeah. play called Death of a Salesman, sure. and he was always schlepping those two valises, those, those two suitcases. I used yeah. to wonder, what was in those valises? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, has, selling, has selling changed since Arthur Miller wrote that play from then to now, would you say? Well, it's Farber. changed for the best. I'll tell right. you, that stereotype is gone. I mean, you talk about the top people in any company, any business. Right. Talk about listening, integrity, honesty. Um, it's too bad, like the Tin Men and, that, and Willie Loman represent selling in such a negative way. Right. Uh, it's definitely changed to become where people are now more focused on the needs of the customer and taking care of them as far as service and thank yous and follow-up. But what about salesmen in giant corporations, uh, Barry, that are faltering? And, you know, there's no secret, General Motors, IBM. What, what's, what's the challenge of, of dealing in a product where, where it's in a, in a downward spiral? Give us a little bit of okay. that. <laughs> well, there's a hundred things in here. You can't give one answer. I'll give two main things. Number one right. is... Uh, uh, the first thing is activity. They need to get out. Let's take a look at maybe selling cars, a car company. They sit there and wait for people to come in. Right. Why not send out letters, go out there to call people on the phone, go back to service? When's the last time you saw your salesperson, you brought your car in for service? Uh, they should go back there, find out how the car is working, if they have any relatives, friends that need one, more activity. The second thing is forget out of our minds what we sell. As if I, I sell training. Uh, some people sell advertising, insurance. Forget that they sell that. What they really sell are the needs of the company, of, of the customer, uh, who they're selling to. Um, for example, I'm working with a, a pharmaceutical company now. Right. And to do training for them, they want me to give their trainers uh, skills on presentations and for a new product launch. I can go in there and do that, but I'd be kidding myself if I didn't go in there and learn about what kind of product are they launching, how are they selling this to the customer, what can I learn about the customers that I go interview about that buy that product from, from that company and then help them sell that product more effectively. If I do that, they'll have me come back. How many, how many people are now uh, 
pitching on the telephone, Barry. How about, you know, I think it's called telemarketing, where... It's unbelievable. Give us, give us, they I, call you during the dinner hour, they tell you, right, if you, the, if you buy a certain book, you're eligible for a, for a $10,000 prize. What, what? Yeah, I, I have them call all the time. The funny thing is, you ask them, you just say, uh, you know, they're, they're reading a script, literally. Right. And the thing is, most people are more successful if they're just themselves and kind of ask questions right away. One of the people I have working with me, uh, Renee, I have her telemarket on the phone for the book. Really? The first thing she asks the people is, tell me a little about your philosophy in the company. What do you do there? Right. They tell her, and then immediately what she does is ties back in how the book can help their business run better. If people did that, there'd be a lot more success on the phone than just pushing products. But that is a booming it's, industry. Sure is. Chatting with a man who's boomingly uh, successful. His name is Barry J. Farber. Richie, I want you to get involved in a minute. It's called Breakthrough Selling. You know what else is very big t nowadays, Barry? There's no secret. It's... Uh, Electronic, in other words, the home shopping network, home shopping spree. Mm -hmm. Will that will that eventually put the one-on-one -on -one salesman in the category of a, of a of a dinosaur, like an old dusty relic when <laughs> everything now is going to be sold on television? I hope not. Let's I put it that way, but I, I don't think so. No. You know, normally what people are looking for today, or yeah. uh, somebody, if you're selling a fifty thousand dollar product or or a jet engine, right. um, you know, you need that expertise of somebody to understand that business of what they're selling to, who they're selling to. Right. Computers just can't do that, what a human mind can do as far as helping customers find their needs. Bravo. That's what uh, Marie Dressler told Gene Harlow in the movies once. You'll never be replaced by, by plastics or something, never. right? Never. You need something organic from mm -hmm. the bones. Real, right? How'd you get involved, Barry? How'd you become, uh, this is the foremost lecturer to groups on how to be a successful salesman. What was the beginning of the beginning of your uh, profession? Well, I sold, uh, years ago, I used to sell fold-up sunglasses, whatever, but I got in the office products industry, and what I used to do, the beginning was the toughest part. Right. I mean, I had ups and downs, but when I finally interviewed customers on a tape recorder, who I worked on the weekends, four nights, and did service things that they, did, they just didn't expect from a salesperson, and then used those interviews to sell other people. But the reason the book, uh, I wanted to, I, it's mentioned in the book about how to get audio interviews with customers to sell new ones. Right. But the most important thing is, is that I wanted to get people not just to hear one point of view, is to hear hundreds. People who sell insurance, who, who work for hotels, who sell cars, vacuum cleaners, jet engines. What do they do? So that you get a variety of uh, expertise in one area. If I, you can, I can only imagine in, in the go-go 60s, for selling, well, could, it was probably so easy. Nowadays, people are so conservative and people aren't spending, so it's tougher now to be a salesman. That's why these books are important, right? Sure is. You, know, you become what you think about. If you're right. just sitting there reading information about right. selling, how you, industry information, how you can be effective in your own job and be you know, educated, listening to tapes, reading, exposing yourself to new seminars, you're only going to get better in that area. It's only going to give you new ideas to make the difference. How about naming one more sales tactic that would work best uh, at a time when consumers are not spending any money? One little tidbit. One little I'll just, the biggest thing is follow-up. Follow -up. You know, you sell anything. Right. You know, a follow-up thank you letter handwritten to somebody that you just bought something. Still pays a off? A phone call. Right. Those little things make the biggest difference. People right. think it's one answer to success. It's garbage. There's a hundred little things you need to do to become successful in selling. And part of it is the follow-up and the service to your customer and making sure that, uh, that they are taken care of afterwards. Uh, example of a company, they bought lumber. This one person wanted to buy something to build onto his house. He got a call back a week later from the person in that division of that area of the company to find out how it was working. It was a retail store. Hmm. When last time you got a call from somebody after you bought in a retail store to Never. see how he's, you know, if he can help out anyway? That topic is being not only a, a, an ordinary salesman, but a star salesman. And I want to have you help us sell some bread books in a couple of minutes, right? Uh, Richie, what do you think? <laughs> that's a good subject. Bread, that's... Uh, sure. Read this and make a lot of that. The staff of life, right? <laughs> bread, bread means money, right? Richie, you're, you're nothing trivial. Richie plays trivia on our program, Barry, but now nothing trivial about that subject. What do you want to ask us, say, Richard? Of breakthrough selling and Barry J. Farber's guidance. Yeah, Barry looks like he's going to have a terrific book. And there are lots of books on selling, uh, Barry. Mm -hmm. Even Ed McMahon has a selling sure. book. Because he is a terrific salesman. Mm -hmm. He has a book on the art of closing sales. What makes your book a little different? Or what information that you have someone else may not have? Okay, you want to hear something funny? And I got to say this is, here's the number one closing technique. Right. Okay, it's this right now. I'm going to give it to everybody in the audience. <laughs> it's this. It's, why don't we go ahead with it? That's it. Because the joke is, out of 200 of the top people, I'm talking every industry, out of 17,000 reps and one insurance company, right. not one of them talked about closing techniques. They talked about the relationship, about follow, about listening good questions, so that when it came time to close for business, it should be automatic. You know, the biggest thing, some nuts running around training these car salespeople about closing. You know, what does it take to get you in this car today? You know, it's more of an adversarial approach. You're turning people off. 
by that. If you do everything to listen, to find out about your needs, and take concern about the relationship you have with that individual, closing should be automatic because you've listened to the needs of the person and then position the product or service that you're selling to meet the needs of that individual. Our and, topic is closing a sale in today's competitive uh, environment, and this man has got those techniques. Will you meet a few of my friends today, Barry? And sure, we'll I'd love to. Carry on. What, what, you, had, you had something in your lap? Yeah, I, I, my uh, father is a big, big fan of yours. He's really? a big fan, and he wanted me to present this to you on the show today. Should I open it? Sure, he'd love that. <laughs> in, in, in public? <laughs> Absolutely. Nothing shocking. Just be careful, it's a little old. All right. Oh, it's an old record by... Uh, these were known, I want to tell the young people, these were known as 78s when records were uh, made of shellac. And this one is called Who Cares by the Great White Way Orchestra. That's what, when the Victor Dog was only a little puppy, right? Those <laughs> were way back days. And this one is called Time Will Tell, a medley of songs from Sally, Irene, and Mary. Isn't that pretty? Boy, I hope you don't have it. I don't. I'm going <laughs> to scale it across the river. <laughs> I'm going to treasure it. Follow these words. More bread and more sales. Let's watch carefully. Be right back. I am in debt to a masterpiece of a panel, a gem of a panel for getting the new year rolling. Uh, I want to ask uh, one last thought now for Barry Farber, somebody out there who's a salesperson, Barry, who's experienced rejection after rejection, and they're sure. pretty disgusted. What's your, what's your uh, optimism there, if any, any, any wisdom for such a person who's very oh. depressed, can't, can't make a sale lately? Number one is don't take it personally. I mean, we take it personally too many times. If you uh, look at it as feedback, as uh, what can I do better next time? What's this person telling me? I have, you know, sometimes if I don't make a sale, I'll call the client and find out what was the reason. Really? You know, I'm just to make myself more effective the next time. They'll usually, either I'll save the sale or give myself more of a learning experience. Edison had uh, 1,200 failures. I mean, if he stopped at 400, he wouldn't have invented uh, a few uh, light bulbs. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, what he said, and journalists asked him, how'd you deal with so many failures? Just like rejection. He said, I didn't. I just found 1,200 ways the light bulb uh, was successful 1,200 times the way the light bulb didn't work. Any feeling, Mr. Burnett, on what you heard so far about uh, the master salesman and his theories here? Harry, I'll have to get your book and uh, <laughs> learn how to sell bread a little bit better. That yeah. looks like a great book. One of the most important words in the language, and you'll back it up, George, is the word bread, right? I got a quiz now for uh, Barry Farber. Harvey McKay said he was on the show and he, and he wrote a book that sold in the millions, right? Sure. He I'm said right. the most important word in the dictionary is not in the dictionary. What's that word for, in business? R Rolodex. Rolodex. What do you mean? Everybody should have a Rolodex, right? It's important. It's not also, it's not who uh, knows you, it's what they know about you. What right. have you done to differentiate yourself? How do we get in touch with you, Mr. Uh, Farber? Mr. Yeah, Farber. Well, I'm going to offer on this show anybody who calls and says Joe Franklin, sign copy of the book and uh, if the number they can call is 1 800 272 Five zero zero five, and there's a money back guarantee if they don't get one idea that's worth four times the value of the book send it back no questions asked and to be in touch with the bread man mr burnett any number 1-800-800 again 8455 said again 1-800 800 again 8455 eight, for four. free recipes for some of my best breads and my almond cinnamon rolls at the world's first guilt-free cinnamon roll <laughs> and they can get that uh, free recipes about uh, for, for, uh, with that number and also information about bread machines. The staff of life, right? The staff of life. Whole grain breads are the staff of life, not this kind of bread. That's not the uh, staff of life. I want to thank my staff right. for organizing this great panel. Yes, Have a thanks. great 1990. What year is it now? 1929? 26? <laughs> Whatever it is.